Hi everyone and welcome to episode 147 of Saranova Crafts. I'm your host Jessica. I can be found as Saranova on Ravelry and Twitter and as Saranova Crafts on Instagram. I am going to do show notes for this episode. I didn't do show notes last week but I am going to do show notes this week for this episode so there will be links to everything um, down below. Um, if you're watching on YouTube there will be links to both my blog and the Ravelry group. Um, if you're on Ravelry and watching it then it's already right below. If you're on the blog again it's right below. So um, yeah I actually have some progress on some stuff um, and I have some progress on a on a project that I can't show you. Um, I'm doing another test knit and this one I'm just gonna say it's for a pair of socks um, but the designer has asked that nobody share anything about the pattern on social media until it's actually released. So um, I'm gonna tell you guys I'm working on a sock pattern and then I'm not gonna show it to you. <laughs> Cuz yeah. Um, but I do have a few other I do have a couple other projects within reach here. I'm um, actually I'm gonna go grab something. I'll be right back. All right, <laughs> I forgot to grab something when I sat down to do this and it was on the couch, which was out of frame range. Anyways, um, I did some what I call instant gratification knitting crochet, like just tiny little projects this week. So I'm gonna sh start with the three things I finished first, all of which took me under two hours each. So first one was I decided, so first of all, they're all dishcloths. I said I was gonna make dishcloths. So here's the first one. Yes, it's bright yellow, but this is just 100% cotton. It's the, uh, what is it, the sugar and cream? The one you can get at like AC More Michaels, that one. Yeah, so here it is. Um, it's knit on the diagonal, so you cast on here, cast off here. It's a free pattern, dead simple. But I put a little, um, it said at the end that you could crochet, like, you know, just do a chain to make a little hook, to make a, to make a little loop to put on a hook, and that's what I did because I want to be able to hang it up. Um, and then I decided I was going to crochet one. This is basically just a, uh, just a granny square. That's it, it's a granny square. Almost, kind of. It's sort of a granny square. Again, they, they called it a windmill. I'm gonna link the ones um, on Ravelry down below. And then lastly, I just finished this one today. I wanted to finish it before I recorded. I accidentally added an extra row in somewhere, so it's slightly lopsided. But this one's like a, a broken rib kind of pattern. A little larger than the other one. You know, but this one has, so this one had you go up to 41, 42 stitches, and this one had you go up to 51, so you can see that there's a size difference. I think I like this size a bit better than this size, but it was an experiment. Never done it before. Figured I'd try it. Again, I put the hook on it. This one might go in the kitchen because it's bigger, but yeah, I like the smaller. This one was actually a lot quicker to knit. This was like hour 45. This one was like 215. You know, it's still quick, easy knits. I got three dishcloths out of it. Yay! <laughs> um... So, uh, uh, let's see, what else am I working on? Um, I'm working on my Hermione socks. Um, the last time you saw them, I had a portion of the foot done, but I wasn't done um, the foot. Well, I finished the foot, um, and I had put a marker in uh, last week after I recorded. So you can see from the marker, I was here, and now I have a heel. So I finished the heel, um, and I need to start on the leg. So. Um, but, you know, finished heel, so that is progress made on a sock. Yay, visible progress. Because, <laughs> you know, I was kind of not knitting for a while. Um, it wasn't that I wasn't knitting, it's that I wasn't making enough progress that you could even tell, even with putting stitch markers in. So, that's that. And then the other thing I started, because I, I needed a more mindless project than the Hermione socks, because the Hermione socks aren't... Like I need to think about the pattern. So I started another one of these. Um, this one, this shawl, it's a shawl. It's called the eight hour shawl, it's crochet. It's basically just a half granny triangle. I'm that big, right? You know, but, um, but uh, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, I'm not gonna keep this one. Um, my mom likes red, so I think I'm gonna give her this one. I just attached a marker for the next time I show it to you guys. Um, it's called the eight hour shawl because it's designed for worsted slash Iran weight. And when you're working in that weight on crochet, you can knit a nice large uh, triangle in eight, not knit, you can crochet a nice large triangle in eight hours. Um, but I am working in fingering, so this is gonna take more than eight hours. So it's the eight hours times 10, <laughs> well not 80 hours, it's like the eight hours times four <laughs> shawl because, you know, fingering takes longer. But um, it'll be a nice, like, small, 
uh, uh, shawl, but I'm thinking I'm gonna give it to my mom because she likes reds. It's not her favorite, favorite color, but she likes red, so I'm not going to complain. Um, I do have a little bit of stash. I'm gonna talk about a book I got, and then I'm gonna talk to you guys about something I did this on Monday, which was super fun. So the stash I got is um, my former uh, Tivana manager is due to have her baby the beginning of September, and I really need to get the move on on a baby blanket. So I finally got the yarn. It's this nice, heathered green. It's Knit Picks Wool of the Andy Superwash in the colorway Noble Heather. Um, and I got, deliberately got Superwash because I want her to use the blanket and I want her to be able to wash the blanket. And I know with a newborn, um, she's not going to care about special wash instructions for something that's not Superwash, so I got Superwash because Superwash makes everyone's life easier. And to go with that, I also got um, I ordered the book off of um, Knit Picks. It's not, it's available elsewhere, um, but I got it off Knit Picks because it was on sale. I got this Japanese stitch dictionary. Um, as you can see, I've marked some, um, I've marked some, some stitch patterns in here, and um, I'm actually going to use what's in this book to make the, um, to make the blanket for Christina. So that's going to be that. But yeah, there's like, you know, it's like all these like really. Some of them are like really complicated and there's they even have in here panels where are they where are the panels do, 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 do. where's the panels like panels like like knit panels that you can um you know that they have the pattern for i almost did this brown one here because that looks kind of like an owl but then i went i don't want a green owl i want more leaf green that's why i got green because i was thinking more leaves like a leaf kind of pattern um but there are leaf patterns in here so um yeah you guys will see that as it progresses um it's worsted weight so that's going to make it go a bit faster um, i'm only probably going to do like two pattern repeats you know just so, like a lap blanket size i'm not it's i'm casting i'm going to cast on less than 200 stitches it's going to be like lap blanket size um, but still something that she could like tuck in the stroller or the carrier or something, right? Like something small that you can use like in the car or just like at home, like in like in like the little seat or something, you know, not like massive blanket. And I'm also going to knit her a baby surprise jacket because um, I've actually never knit one. And um, if you're wondering why I'm not just using a random baby blanket pattern, it's that I don't own any random baby blanket patterns because this is really the first person I've had to knit a baby blanket for. Um, and uh, I figured why not make up my own? So there's that. Um, let's see, I just got a shift position here. Please excuse any weird noises you hear. One of the cats is playing with a toy like right down there. So anyways, the thing I did this past Monday, <laughs> um, uh, I'm not to be this mysterious or anything. And if you follow me on Instagram, you already know what I did on Monday. I went to go see the Sailor Moon Super S movie in theaters. I went with a very good friend. Um, she actually used to be my work study boss, <laughs> but now we've just become friends. Um, she's a librarian. Uh, we worked together when I was at UMass Lowell. Um, and I was still a student there. Uh, but she found out that they were doing these showings of the Sailor Moon movies. Now I was going to go to one last week. And that was the first two movies, the Sailor Moon R movie, which is the Rose one. I cannot remember the villain's name, but he's like controlled by some flower creature and there's a meteor heading towards the earth and Sailor Moon has to like defeat the creature and then keep the meteor from crashing into the planet. Anyways, and then the second movie, um, which is Sailor Moon Super, um, is Snow Princess Kaguya. Um, and it's like this ice being has was like kicked out of the solar system millennia ago and is now back and is trying to freeze the earth and of course the sailor said she have to stop her because they always have to stop the villain <laughs> so but this movie was the black dream hole um sailor moon super s black dream hole and i'm just going to read you the thing off the back of the case of the movie because i have the movie in two forms Come on, stop it, stop it, stop it. It's good, okay. So I have both the original dub, <laughs> VHS, the original dub, um, you know, yeah, old, remember these? Yeah, the old good plastic cases. <laughs> but it's called Black Dream Hole. And then I have, I don't actually have a case for it because a friend of mine bought it and then gave it to me. So I just have it in this old, you know, thing, old sleeve. Uh, but this is the uncut Japanese version. So. <laughs> I have both. Um, so basically the plot is this. The wicked Banianu has come to capture all the children to gain enough power to absorb the earth into her black dream hole. Hence the title of the movie. 
The black dream hole is located in the center of Bodyana's castle and absorbs all the dream energy from the children. The more children she kidnaps, the larger the dream hole gets. Once it reaches a certain size, it will be large enough to swallow the planet, sending, sentencing all the people to eternal sleep in... They call them evil dream boxes. They're, they're coffins. They're, they're dream coffins. In the, in the Japanese, they changed it for the dub. I don't know why. It's a coffin. Evil dream box sounds just as menacing as dream coffin, so I don't know. Um, when Bariano finds out that uh, Chibi Moon has an enormous power that will greatly assist her in her quest, she kidnaps her along with other children. So, ta-da! Um, you can see that's the evil queen with Chibiusa. And yes, I call her Chibiusa. I refuse to call her Rini. That is such a stupid name. She's Chibiusa, and she's Chibi Moon. She's not Mini. She's not Mini Moon or Rini Moon or whatever. It's, she's Chibi. She's Chibi Moon and Chibiusa. I'm sorry. And there she is with one of the other characters that gets introduced in this movie in the center there, and then you never see them again. And then, that's that same kid with Sailor Moon. So, had fun, saw the movie. Um, the, it turns out the movie was dubbed. I didn't know that going in, but that was totally fine by me. Um, and they did, they showed a short, they showed a Sailor Moon short before the movie. And um, if you've read the manga, you're familiar with the short story, Amy's First Love. Um, but I didn't know they'd made a short of it. So they had the short about Amy's first love first. Um, and then they had the movie in Japanese with English subtitles in the theater. It was really fun to see it on the big screen. I had a blast. They had posters. So I, so I picked up a poster at the movie theater, right? So, and it's got two sides. So I picked up two of them and I'm gonna put them side by side. So you'll have one here, then the other one here. So you get both sides of the poster because I'm that kind of nerd. Um, but uh, 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 yeah, so, but it was funny at, in the opening. Um, if you've watched a lot of anime, you know that usually if they leave the Japanese theme song, they will put in the lyrics in the subtitles, whether it be the, the English translation of the lyrics or just a transliteration of the Japanese into English letters. Well, they didn't do that for Sailor Moon for the movie, um, but everyone kind of sung along to Moonlight and Setsu anyways, because people, you know, the show premiered in 1994 in Japan. It's 26 years old. I think people know the theme song by now. So, uh, so yeah. Um, promptly sung along with the theme song, promptly hummed the tune that the, okay, so that guy, that guy, he's a fairy, he's a fairy, there's other bad fairies in the movie, and the fairies play a tune to hypnotize the kid, like the Pied Piper, right? And so the opening, so, you know, they show the beginning of the movie, and you can hear the tune in the background, and nothing, and Sarah's like, how do you know that? And I'm just like, because I've watched this movie at least three dozen times, <laughs> and I still, it's still in my brain, right? Um, but had a very good time. Uh, Sarah, the movie wasn't quiet. It was one of those showings where everyone was kind of talking and making a commentary. And like we were talking to other people in our row and people, people were talking. It was not a quiet showing. If you wanted a quiet movie, this was not it. Everyone was, you know, but Sarah and I kept making snide comments to each other. We'd lean over and, and say something. And, um, you know, and at the end, this guy a couple rows down in front of us stood up and was like, did you guys notice an audio problem? And I kind of looked at Sarah and I looked back at him and I said, no, not really, but honestly, I've seen the movie so many times that if there was an audio problem, my brain just filled it in and I didn't even notice. Because it's one of those things where I've seen it enough, I pretty much have it memorized. It's like the movie Apollo 13. That was like my fi don't ask me why, I was a weird child. Apollo 13 was and still is one of my favorite movies of all time. I wore out, wore out my VHS copy when I was a kid. If that tells you how much I watched the movie, I wore out the VHS tape um, from watching it so much. I, you know, if you put on that movie, I'm saying lines to this day. Even though I haven't watched it in a couple of years now, if, if like you put it on, I still got the lines. I still know what's going on, everything. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things. Um, oh, but sidetrack about Apollo 13 real quick. If you have a chance to watch the movie like on DVD or Blu-ray, because they did do a re-release on Blu-ray, and you have the commentary track, one of the most interesting commentary tracks I've ever heard is on Apollo 13. And so, um, so Jim Lovell was the commander of Apollo 13. And um, when they filmed the movie and then they were re-releasing, he's still alive. Him and his wife are still alive. They're still living today in 2018. He's in his 80s now. But when the movie came out, it was, you know, 10, it was like 15 years ago now. It, more than that, almost 20 years ago now, the movie came out. And so he did, when they did the DVD release and they did the commentary tracks, uh, there's, you know, the director commentary, but then there's a commentary that is the real Jim and Marilyn Lovell doing a commentary on the movie about 
the mission that Lovell was in charge of. So, I think it's a re it's really interesting commentary track because it's not your normal kind of movie commentary. It's not like the production team or the actors or something. It's the person the events actually happened to commenting on the movie about those events. And I thoroughly enjoy it. So anyways, uh, back to Sailor Moon. Had an absolute blast. I wore my Fight Like a Girl shirt, um, which says Fight Like a Girl in like sparkly galaxy letters and has Sailor Moon's uh, crescent moon wand, wand, which is her first wand weapon. Um, it gets replaced by later wands, but it's her first wand that she puts the, the Ginzui show in, in the series. Um, the Silver Crystal, if you don't know what Ginzui show is, because I use the Japanese names for stuff in the series, because I'm a horrible fan. Um, but anyways, yes, had a great time watching the movie. I dug these out of my mom's house, because I was over my mom's house. And I dug these out of where they had been hiding in my room at my mom's. I have the VHS of the other two movies as well, but only in the dub, not in the sub. The This movie's the only one I have sub. But anyways, that was my week. I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, if you want to join the Discord, I'd be happy to have you, happy to chat. I have Discord running basically all the time on my computer and my phone. Um, like, subscribes, comments are all very much appreciated. Um, even if you don't subscribe or like, you know, just leave a comment. Tell me what you thought. Um, do you have a question about any of the patterns I've shown you or what I've talked about or whatever? Um, I like knowing that people actually watch these. So, you know, if you can just drop me a line, that would be great. Um, let's see. You know, how many people actually, you know, my, my previous video only had 12 views, so you know. But it would be nice if I had, would have had 12 comments. I'm not begging. I'm really not. You don't have to if you don't want to. I'm not one of those people. I'm not in this to make money, so I'm not somebody who, like, needs the views to make money because my videos aren't monetized because I'm not nearly popular enough. I'm not trying to be popular enough. Honestly, it seems, it seems like a lot of politics to be that popular. And I don't like politics. <laughs> politics are difficult and annoying. Um, and I don't like them. So, <laughs> anyways, if you feel like it, I would appreciate a like or a subscribe or a comment. You don't have to do all three. Feel free to come join the Discord as well. And, uh, yeah, I will see you guys all next time. So, uh, I guess, yeah, in about a week, because I, I should be recording next week because I have Wednesdays off now. So, yeah, I should see you in a week. All right, have a good one. Bye.